What up you two, Steve on Team Pro Panda. Next week is San Jose October Regionals. I'm psyched about that, I hope you are as well. Um, so today I wanna to talk about something that can possibly up your game quite a bit. And basically what it is, is stopping and be mindful of your bad habits while dueling. It is not what you do that wins you games a lot of times, it's what you do not do that wins you games. And I noticed that people play this game for quite a while they will start to develop these bad habits and they'll bring with them to locals, regionals, YCS and they'll lose in a bubble because of these little ticks. Um, and, and basically, if you're mindful of these things and you stop them, you'll significantly increase your game and you'll be a much better duelist, a much more competitive duelist, all that good stuff. So let's go right into it. I broke it down to three different, very specific bad habits that I see rampant, it's everywhere. Um, and, and I see that people who usually top are the ones who do not do these things. So let's go right, right into it. The first thing is called setting too fast. So let's go, I draw five card and I draw one more for draw phase. So I draw five card, two, three, four, five. I go first, so I go draw, set, set, go. Um, see how fast I set those cards? Especially this trap on spell right here. That tells my opponent that this card is something that is chainable. Um, maybe a bottomless, maybe an MST, some, it's something that's chainable. So because of that, my opponent, if he's smart, if he can catch my little bad habit, will not MST this card. This is probably a floater because it says so fast. Um, so because of that, uh, my opponent will probably not ram into it or he will like, you know, hit it with like, you know, Ashura or something. Or he will like find a way to misworm it later. Because of those things, I've read Telegraph what I did in my first play by the, the, the speed I set my cards. So, like I said, never set cards so fast. Um, specifically, setting a spell and trap. If you're to, s s people normally do this. People who are um, like you know good at this game or, or have good experience, they will set spell and trap in main phase two. So they'll go set a monster, then main phase two to set a trap. Like that. If I see someone set a trap first and then do something, that will also indicate that this is something that's chainable. Um, so you don't want to do that. So a little rule that I made for myself is that uh, I will draw and I'll look at my cards. I'll look at all my cards, you know, and I wait for about four or five seconds. So I draw four or five seconds later. I go set. All right. Then you wait another four or five seconds. Then you go. Okay, go ahead. That will indicate to my opponent that these cards require thought and strategy to place down here. So you make him play much more carefully and play around what I have. Um, and you will not telegraph anything. This might be a live card, it might be a bluff, he don't know. All he knows is that I took thought in putting it down. So that's something very important. Uh, in reality, I just set a Goblin Zombie and set an MST. But that's, that's really just, you know, typical play. But it's how I set it that communicate differently than just set, set, you know. So that's the first bad habit, that's setting too fast. Um, the second one I want to talk about, it is um, not declaring your phases. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, we're in the meta right now that phases do mean a lot. Uh, I mean, you have Fek Veiler, you have, you know, um, Threatening Roar is becoming popular, and you have, you know, your 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 Cheap on Frog that can only come out doing, you know, standby face. So, you know, face is very important. Because of that, I normally declare my battle face. So I go, um, rather than just go oh, attack, I go enter battle face. You know, it's very simple. Just go enter battle face, then you declare your attack. By doing so, you can ensure that your opponent will not confuse, like, you know, oh, is it battle phase yet? Is it main phase one still? And that's very important because you go enter battle phase, and if you catch up on the off guard, we we'll just go, oh, yeah, we'll go ahead. You declare an attack, and they go, oh, yeah, Valor. I forgot to Valor. Then you go, oh, it's too bad. It's too late. I declare my battle phase already. So just simply going enter battle phase is very important. Back then, when there's like an you know, Honest and Kalut, when they first came out, people would remember to declare, um, Damage step. They go damage step, damage calculation, attack. And remember how important declaring that damage calculation is. So if you go attack and you do something, they can't just go book you or something, right? So basically, 
always declare damage calculation when using in you know, honest and the same reason as of right now you always want to declare a battle face when entering battle face so you go uh, battle face it can just go oh yeah, yeah um valor etc etc so that's that um i actually have two more which is pretty cool the third one is actually very very bad and i want you to take special note of this one um this one is called checking your grave too fast so i'm gonna cut my deck real quick and then I'll put some cards in my grave. This is my grave right here. And a lot of times, people will draw one of these very specific cards and they will look in their grave Im like immediately. The first one is Monster Reborn. Um, they draw Monster Reborn and they'll go, oh, oh, let me steal my grave. Oh, let me see your grave. You know, that's the first thing they do. And I love it when people do that because I main Mind Crush right here. When people draw, and then they go, oh, let me see my grave, and they smash your grave. When you do it immediately, um, I go, okay, wait, before you enter main phase one, um, I'll let's like activate Mind Crush, and I call Monster Reborn. And a lot of times they go, oh, and I ditched it. And go, oh, how do you know I have Monster Reborn? Well, I know because you checked your grave immediately after you drew. Um, and because of that, I, I can make a very good guess that you, you just top deck into Monster Reborn. Um, I hate people top deck the monster reborn, but you know, it, 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 it you know, screw them. Anyway, so that's one of the reasons. So if you if you if you if you draw and you immediately check my grave in your grave, you're telegraphing that you drew monster reborn. If I have mind crush, I'll flip it before you can play it. And I've done this so many times. And it's so funny because I actually did it on DN before. Like the guy checked the grave and go, oh, uh, you know, main face, uh, no main face, uh, stand face, uh, crush monster reborn, good stuff. All right, so that's one thing. Second one, Dark Arm Dragon. If I see someone drew and they immediately look at the grave, just immediately look at the grave, I would like think that, oh, they talked at Dark Arm Dragon. So, so same concept, Monster Reborn. And also, same thing for BLS. If someone just drew and they immediately look at the grave, I'll go either to have Monster Reborn, BLS, or Dark Arm. If a crush card, I can crush very easily, just blind crush and guess right because of the way they check the grave and whatnot. So a, a way to not do that is when you draw that monster reborn, take a deep breath. Just take a breath, wait for a few seconds, then check people's grave. So a lot of times when you do that, um, you know, they won't be able to to read what you have in your hand. Um, I know it's really hard to do, especially when you're like, you know, very nervous and whatnot, but do your best to, when you draw your dark arm, you know, don't look at your grave immediately. Just draw a dark arm, you know, kind of look at it a little bit, take a little breath, then you look at your grave, look at your hand, look at the table, look at your grave again, then you play it. All right, so keep that in mind. That's good. Uh, so what's the next one? The next one is doing one of these, shuffling your hand. Um, I see a lot of people do this here. They draw their hand and they go over and over again. First of all, that's really annoying. I, and I hate when people do that. Um, it's a nervous tick. I know what it is. It's basically you have, you're, you're anxious, you're nervous, and it's a coping strategy. You're just kind of doing this. Um, so basically, that, don't do that. That is bad because it, it, it shows that you are nervous. And a lot of times you're nervous because you are afraid of what the opponent has. So when I see my opponent shuffling his hand rapidly and trying to trip it out a little bit, I got a feeling that he probably has nothing. If he's setting a card or two, it, it may be a bluff or it may be he don't want me to hit a very specific card. So because of these nervous takes, I can good, give a pretty good guess of what my opponent hand is and how much um, defense and offense he has. Uh, so so don't do that. And again, one thing that I do, and I think it, it's been working out for me, is after a draw, I actually put my hand on the table and I put my hand on it, you know, and then I look at my opponent and I look at what he's doing and I just, when he's doing his turn, rather than shuffling my hand, I'll actually put it down and I look at um, everything he's doing. So his deck, his hand, uh, 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 where he's putting his card, etc., etc., etc. By doing so, it does several things. First of all, it lets me concentrate on what he is doing. Um, so off the bat, they'll ensure that he won't be able to cheat. Um, and the funny thing is that this happens in real life and on Duelist Network, where if I go pop duality and I'm like, you know, select three cards, I look at my banish to like select my card, my opponent sometimes will draw a card because they don't think I'll pay attention. Um, same thing in real life. If you are too busy shuffling your card, the, your opponent can easily sneak a card. I know it happens all the time in regionals and NYC and so whatnot. So when it's their turn, put your hand down, you know, look at, look at them, look at what they're doing 
and then when you feel like that, hey, there's some, I want to activate something, then you pick your hand back up, look at it again, look at what they have, and there's nothing, you put it back down, and go continue. Just take it very slow, but the thing is, do not have these little nervous ticks and whatnot, because you makes you anxious, and makes your heart race, so just, just sit down and just relax. So that is that. Um, so yeah, that's that. That's all I have right now. So these are the bad habits that I don't think you should do. And I believe that if you're mindful of them and you correct them before the regionals, I can guarantee that you do much better than last time. So um, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time.